welcome. I'm I'm uh I'm so happy you're here. If you don't know where you are, you're at the Trucker Brown channel. Where you should have been first before you decided to say, Hey man, I'm gonna go um drive trucks because I seen it on T V or TikTok or YouTube or wherever it is you think you've seen it at. This problem that you're about to look at right now is the end of the problem I told you about fat trucking. Remember I told you about that? The fatty whitey trucking. And some people see this and it looks good and it looks fun. These women are free and they're having all these balls. And then women come into it and they say, I was watching some people on TikTok and YouTube, some young ladies, and they got nowhere. We're going to listen to this conversation. We're going to point out and give her some of the tips that she should have got if she had to an actual channel. That wasn't about butt cheeks. Let's keep going. Thank you. No, actually, three three years ago, before I actually started truck driving, a friend gave me the idea of truck driving. Hadn't really thought of it before. Someone put the idea in my head. I immediately started watching YouTube videos. That's where YouTube comes in. <laughs> um, immediately started watching videos, and they made it look so... First question is, who is they? That is the first question. Amorous. Some of those girls that are truckers. So the truck- and we'll stop it there. Girls that are truckers. Listen, we have to make a separation of the good and the bad. There must be a separation. But if you're trying to figure out what's going on with actual truck driving, and it's day to day, you would have to be someone who's into information entertainment. Meaning you're not going on there for the frills and the grills and the, the makeups and the outfit choices and I'm winding up the, the uh I'm winding up the feet off of the trailer in tights, reaching for my airline. You can't watch that. Because that's not telling you shit. That's bullshit. I'm sorry, it is what it is. And this is the, you know, this is the outcome. Those videos, they showed people traveling around the world, living their best lives, um, vacationing on each load that they took, and it just looked so wonderful. And a lot of them were living in their trucks. They were showing that they gave up their homes and were saving so much money, traveling the world, making money, living in the truck. Guess who decided to do it, guys? Guess who decided to do it after watching YouTube make it look so glamorous? Yep, I did. So this is what I did. Went and got my trucking permit. My thing is, you said they made it look so glamorous. You did not say one time that you watched a you watched a video about the clock. You didn't say one time did you watch a video about what to expect from certain type of companies. You didn't say one time you watched a video about how freight is acting out here. You didn't say one time you watched a video about driving in the snow. You didn't say you watched anything that was informational. There's too much content out here. To say, oh, well, you know, nobody showed me anything. No, if you didn't see anything, you didn't look for it. You look for what was glamorous. And let's be real. We're too old for that. We're too old for that. If the hotties that's um, that's doing trucking on TikTok and YouTube, that's just about their outfits and all that type of stuff and where they get to go and all. If that can stop you at our age, because you're around my age. I think she said she's 40 something. I'm 39. If if you can't see through that, you have a problem with discernment. You you do not. They don't tell you any information. Well, how you know she looked at that, TB? Because you can look at the numbers of the people who say information, and the numbers of the people showing butt cheeks, or they're showing how tricked out their cab is, or here's my dog, or I spent the, I spent the time in I spent time at this resort on my time off. This is trucking life. It's not trucking life. It's bullshit. And I've been saying it for years. But I was labeled as a hater. Boom, got that done, super easy. And then put in my 30 day notice because I was a renter, put in my 30 day notice for my home and picked out a trucking school or the opposite way around. Picked out a trucking school, got accepted and then put in my 30 day notice. First school I went to and I say first because there were several and we'll get into that. First school that I went to, I got accepted by Swift. Hold on, guys. Sorry, my phone is ringing. I try to silence my notifications. Hopefully. The first one you went to was Swift, and you could make it through Swift? Let's listen. Swift went to Swift. Swift was, it's probably good that I did not get my license through Swift with all of the bad things that I've heard about it, and I had a bad experience as well. So I have my permit already going to Swift, you know, to try to get my license, my commercial driving license, and about maybe... I want to say almost two weeks in, everything, no, maybe a weekend, because this is still classroom time at this point. 
either way a week or two weeks in i already have my um, medical clearance my dot for any of you that know what that is for those of you that don't you have to get medical clearance to be a commercial driver and i already had that done and then swift comes in and says okay everyone has to also have it done with our doctor so their doctor comes in that is annoying boom, clears me everything's fine they have another doctor come in i think two days later and i don't know if this would make a difference but some doctors from different cultures do view things very differently so my first doctor that cleared me was caucasian cleared me everything was fine for some reason they had another doctor come in i guess it, that doctor had quit and they wanted the new doctor to redo everyone's medical the new doctor that came in was asian that doctor did not clear me that doctor stated that i was obese which i am a little bit overweight but he said that i was medically obese and that i had sleep apnea i've never had sleep apnea and i've had medical clearance dot before that because i started with a class b i've had a class b for years and for years i've been getting my dot never once has a doctor said that i needed to be checked for or had sleep apnea yeah this this came more prevalent later on when they were trying to pass off these uh cpap machines if you want to know if you're obese type in your your uh your height into the into Google and and it'll tell you the weight you're supposed to be. It'll tell you from your height and weight what your BMI is, body mass index, and if you're obese or not. That's neither here or there. Her next look was a little small to be have sleep apnea issues, but at the same time, you know, it's hard to tell these companies, you know, no, no, I'm not, I don't have sleep. You, it's hard to get around that. So I'll give her that. That's that's a that's annoying. That's annoying. So now Swift says that I have to do the sleep test, have to get this machine and all the of that. So I here's, here's the problem. If you, A, I don't disagree with her for leaving if you're in the position to do so. But if you're telling me you got rid of your apartment and this is, you know, I kind of need, then it gets, it gets a little foggy where it's like, hey man, you kind of got to grit your teeth and do what you got to do for this job because you let go of your apartment and the job. But she's not wrong for being like, I don't want to deal with that. I, I can't say that I'm, you're wrong. I'm just you're 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 coming from a position of having a choice when the truth is you don't really have a choice because you put yourself in a position where you don't have a choice. But it, are they wrong for uh, for for playing with you like that? I think so. Put in my 30 day notice already. I'm no longer at my home. See, and this is something you should have thought of before you said, all right, I'm not dealing with that. I'm leaving. You see what I'm saying? That's something you should have thought of then. And uh, the other choices are um, you can try to go get an independent study maybe and see if you uh, have sleep apnea. And there's a chance you could have it. There's a chance you can have it. Just because you've never been diagnosed with it before doesn't mean you don't, you don't have it. Because I've been going through places. I'm bigger than her probably. And no one has ever tried to put a CPAP on me. You understand? So, and there's people smaller than me with them. So it's like, it, it, that's a foggy area. I'm thinking I'm going to get my license, be on the road, and in a truck already by now. Didn't happen. So I, I leave Swift. I end up just staying in a hotel for a while until I found another school to go to. Next school was CR England. Sweet Pea is jumping out from the frying pan into the fire. Let me give you some clarity on the situation. I'm an alumni of Premier Trucking School, which is CR England. Gary, Indiana. Okay. So that's, that's my Ramada. You understand? But at the same time, let's, let's see what she says. <laughs> another school that you know you hear not so great things about i did okay at but okay no, no, no. my friend that originally told me about trucking he'd went to cr england he did say his experience was not the best but you know i could go there and get my license for a low cost you drive for them you pay it back by driving for them basically they will give you a loan okay so i try that i go to cr england and mind you i just left swift and let me rewind a little bit you also have to get drug clearances when you become a commercial driver. So Swift did a hair follicle test and a urine test. Mind you, I don't use any drugs. Oh. Only medication I take is for hypertension. I barely drink. Pass that with Swift, flying colors, my hair test, my urine test, of course, everything. Now, here comes, this is about just a few weeks later, maybe two weeks, I wanna say. I'm at CR England. In class at CR England, we're starting to drive a little bit already. 
things are going well, so I think. See, our England comes in, starts to call people out of the class. They call me out of the class and say that I need to call this number they give me a paper for. It's a few of us. Guess what they say? <laughs> and it was just so funny to me. They're such a freaking joke that I did not pass my drug test. This is a very interesting subject because this happened to someone close to me, you know, and I think it said that, oh, you're, you're, you're on cocaine. It, it said something crazy. And when they jumped to the, the next job, because they say, oh, we're not going to take you. The next job says they're clear. This does happen more than you think. This happens more than you think. They're messing up on the drug test. It happens more than you think. So, I mean, you can't hate on that. But I failed my hair test, but passed my urine test. Or either it was the opposite way. Right? No, it was passed the urine test, failed the hair test. Now, how is that possible when I just passed with Swift? If there was, and they said that it was marijuana. Mm -hmm. You guys, I am in my late 40s. I tried marijuana maybe twice in my life when I was about 16. And then again in my 20s. I don't smoke marijuana just at all. I don't eat any edibles. I don't have anything to do with marijuana. So come on, Sierra England. I asked them, can they redo it? They refused to redo it. I told them that there was no way that could be in my system. They didn't care. Asked me to leave the school. And someone said that I should or could have possibly taken that to court and fought that. Because, like I said, I've just passed the test with Swift, hair and urine. And I don't do anything, any type of drugs. Like I said, barely drink. But now they're saying that there's marijuana in my system at Sierra England. So did not get my license through them. So now going back to I'm homeless again at this point. I'm not in trucking school. I'm back staying in a hotel. Mind you, my money's low at this point because I should have been had my license, been on the road, been in a truck. So this is over a month at this point that I've been out of my house and two schools. So probably two months at least. So I apply for another school. <laughs> Get my license with this one. CRST. Hey, you're just jumping. <laughs> you're jumping out of crazy situation into nutty situation into psycho situation. It is not getting better with the hops, man. I don't, I mean, honestly, this is, this is, it's like these places are the worst of the worst. My gosh, bro. We're going to talk more at the end. Let her get it out. Well, love them, have nothing but great things actually to say about them. Well, can't say nothing. There was some trainer issues, but it was a good school. CRST in Riverside, California is where I did get my trucking license. Go there. Now, mind you, remember. Remember, CR England said that there was stuff in my system. Swift, I had just passed. And then I go to CRST. I confidently take another hair follicle test and urine test and, of course, pass that one. So, CR England, if any of you guys see this, you guys are full of bullshit and I should have, should have sued your asses. Because to say that someone has drugs in their system and they don't, it's total bullshit. And you don't just do that to people. But either way, I digress. I want to comment at the bottom if she has a case. Comment if she has a case at the bottom. I don't know that. Comment at the bottom if she has a case. Because, I mean, it, that does happen more than you think. More than you think, people get, uh, you know, and those people in the office, whatever the thing says, they believe. They don't, they don't, they are not going to the lab to check if they're doing their stuff correctly and all that type of stuff. They just, whatever the lab says, they take. So, yeah, that, that, that's, that, that's a thing, yo. At this point, I'm with CRST. I get my trucking license. I think things are going well. I go out with my trainer. Uh, that was a, it was good and bad. There was some nightmarish days with that. We'll get into that probably in another video. But at this point, I'm on the truck. I passed, got my test. I'm in training now. Training was a month. So I'm on the month. I'm on the road for a month with my trainer. And the catch with CRST is that you have to drive in teams. I don't know anyone there. I don't know anyone so that gonna I give want you a to teammate. drive with. Ended up meeting a friend there. We're still great friends. Hey, CC, if you're watching, we were going to drive together. But the truth is, neither one of us were really ready. So at this point, I leave CRST after being out. I actually stayed out with my trainer a little longer because I did not have a team partner to drive with. So let's say maybe two months I'm driving with CRST, about two months. And then I leave them. I find a trucking job. Get with that job and totally sucked. You want to know why? I couldn't back. I couldn't back to save hold, my hold, freaking hold, life. Hold the phone. 
you went through two schools, got to this school, passed it, stayed on a truck for two months. How in two months you stayed on the truck 30 days longer than you should and you do not know how to back at all? People, you have to watch out for this. That means your trainer's just using you for miles. This is why you should be over here at the Truck Round channel where you can have a real conversation. You can message. You can call into the show. You can say, what should I be thinking about when I'm on the truck? You can do those things here. This is why you don't watch trash content. You see? Because if you are saying, look, I'm in school. I'm having some issues with backing. We can have some conversations about that and you can listen to the people in the chat that can give some pointers. And we'd also can tell you, you have to hold your trainer to the fire about banking, about backing because they get lazy. They get lazy and they don't want to, all they want is the miles. So if you can't do it, they just do it for you. You're supposed, this is what's supposed to be happening at training. We're going to take this time to to think. When you're in training, every time y'all go to a truck stop to shut down, You're the one that should be backing every single time. If y'all have a layover, you should be jumping on the drop. You should be, you should be driving out of the truck stop, looping around and trying to back in two, three, four times on an off day because you get off days. So if they say, oh man, we dropped this load, your next loading till 1600 tomorrow. He should say, all right, we're going to go out here and do two hours of backing drills. That's what a good trainer does. If you're at a decent truck stop, you'll see it sometimes. And the dude, he'll just be back there and just, you know, helping the dude back in in the middle of the day. You know, that's what a good trainer does. If you're on there and you're just like, oh, I don't like the back. So if he's not forcing me to do it, I'm not going to do it. You're going to end up screwed at the end because when you get off the truck, you have to back. When you get into your own truck, you have to back. I'm sorry. It touched a nerve. You got to remember, I'm a prime Death Star trainer, bro. Back in the gap. So. I'm really in the street like that. I really do this. So this is, I'm a trainer for real, for real, bro. Matty Ice, you know what it is. Stiff Cliff, they'll tell you. So I decide, okay, I need some more training. And you guys don't talk crap about me. At this point, I go to Schneider. I'm hired by Schneider. I'm like, okay, I need some more training with my backing. I go to Schneider. I do end up driving for them solo. Understand she has, she has Swift. CR England, CRST, unnamed company, and now Schneider. All of that is on her record. All of this is on her record. And this is going to play into a little bit later when I have, when I get into my conversation about this. I was with Schneider for about four months. I'm on the road for about four months. No, I want to say maybe close to six. So I'm on the road. Remember, I have no home to come back to because, you know, in my mind, it's so glorious. Watching the YouTube videos, I'm going to be on the road in my truck making so much money, saving the money because I'm not paying rent and, you know, blah, 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 all that. I'm with Schneider for about six months. Their plan that they had for me, I believe, was 34 days out and four days at home. It was something similar, something like that. That sucked. At this point, I'm with them for the few months. I'm still not getting my backing down like I should. Yeah, see, now this is, this is, this is bridging into your fault, your daily business. This is bridging into your fault. At four months, you should be able to wrench a truck in. This is, this is at this point, regardless if you had a good trainer or not, you've been dropping off loads for four months at Snyder, two months at the other place. So we can say that's four, five, six. And you've been in training a couple of months more than that. You should be able to put something in the hole. It ain't going to be pretty, but you should be able to get it in there. And this is what I mean by when when I tell people, that means you really not, at some point, you're not into this. A, you said I was out for a month at a time and, and that sucked. That's insane because you have, you said yourself that you got rid of your apartment. So it should matter. You coming home should not be in the it sucked category at all. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I should move forward. Thank you. And I am anxious every time I back. Just about every time. We're going to say 70% of the time because there were some times that was really good. Got it right in. You know, nice open space. When it's open space, I'm okay. I'm good. But there are a lot of tight spaces going into a lot of my loads were in California and L.A. Sometimes you got to back in off the street and I can't do it. My anxiety would just shoot up to 10,000. And here we are. I cannot blame, I cannot blame a trucking company for your anxiety. You understand? I can't blame a trucking company for your anxiety. This is something we gotta, we gotta stop doing. This is, let me tell you something. This is, this is running. This is anxiety really don't, you know, when you say you're going down a mountain in the, in the snow, that's when anxiety makes sense. But if you're in LA, meaning no snow, no bad weather, it's just a little tight. Then we have a problem. You have to manage your anxiety. 
You can't say that trucking made me homeless and your problem with Schneider is your backing. That's not Snyder's responsibility because Snyder didn't get you your license. So you come into Snyder, you should know how to back, period. I think they should be, if you're not good at backing, because they should be doing a road test from there, someone should have said, all right, give us some extra training on backing. But if you're saying you can get it, I get it in a hole with no problem. That means you can back. You just have anxiety around it. That's a you problem. That's not a Snyder problem. And after so many months of that, I just, I was so anxious. I just couldn't do it anymore. So mind you, remember, I ended up leaving there, trying to find a local job and. Which is insanity. Why is this insanity, people, to my Trucker Brown subscribers? This is insanity because you have to back more local. You have to back more often and tighter local. So if you were trying to duck backing, you had no business going local. Not to mention you don't have nowhere to stay. So how are you going to go local with no place to stay? You understand what I'm saying? I don't want this to come off mean. We just want to get to the root, the dirty bone root of the conversation. You said trucking made you homeless. The truth is you could have stayed at Snyder and worked through the anxiety. You see what I mean? Y'all got to comment at the bottom and tell me where I'm off. The stuff in the beginning, the, the, the messing up office stuff with truck, that's all weird. That happens, bro. King's office is horrendous. But once you're off in that truck and you say the anxiety, that's you. And then I have no place to stay. So I went local. That makes no sense. That don't make no sense. You shouldn't be going local without no place to stay. You at least should have stayed at Schneider until you got yourself a place. Maybe she did. I didn't hear her say it. You come at the bottom if she said it. Um, stay with a friend at this point. After that, I go to stay with my friend. Stay with my friend for a while. End up getting back into actually a regular job. Went to a warehouse and did that. Worked at that warehouse about seven months. And staying with my friend at this point, uh, not really saving much money because they weren't paying that much money and i'm not the best budgeter to be honest so i did not was not saving for a place of my own i was saving but not enough warehouse ends up shutting down letting everyone go and my friend worked at that warehouse as well so at this point he has to move because he has no job i have to move because i'm staying with him i have no job at this point i'm staying in hotels and staying with family members and uh, the hotel thing is running out because I have no money. Fast forward, I get another trucking job. I'm with that job. This is the one that I just recently left that I was telling you guys about. I'm with that job and... Sorry, I had to stretch my leg out. That job was... I don't even know how to describe it. The job was kind of cool. The dispatcher was horrible. Hated the dispatch. They ended up changing dispatch after a few months. And the new dispatch, I just, we did not vibe at all together. He talked to people like, he talked to me like I was his child. I was not vibing well with that at all. See, this is, this is, this is a problem that is happening in the workspace. First of all, you are in no position. This is the truth. And I'm not talking down to her. I'm being, this is just, let's be honest about this situation. You're not in the position to care about how someone's talking to you. You have no place to stay from what you said. So quabbling over people's attitude towards you is childish. You're not in no position to care about if he talks to you nice. People who care about that have things called savings and a place to go. That's just a flat out truth. If you down bad, you got to do what you got to do. You're ending up back in a trucking company and you're saying the problem with this trucking company is that they have an attitude. You didn't say that with Snyder. It sounds like you should have stayed at Snyder and worked through the backing. You didn't say you had a problem with how they talk to you. You didn't say you had a problem with the pay. You said the backing anxiety. So you leave them and because you want to go local, you go local, you get a warehouse job, the job closes, you go back to trucking at another company, which you did not name. And you're saying, I don't like their attitude. At this point, this is what you call getting in your own way. You should have kept your ass at Schneider and worked through it. You wouldn't. So, so I reject the notion that trucking made you homeless. I reject it. No one's here to be nice to you. No, let me tell you something. You got to have to get your attitude in check. It's something I've had to deal with myself. You got to get your attitude in check. We're not Mary Queen of Scots here. You're a worker. He talks to you like you're an employee that needs him for a check because you do. You were with Snyder four months. You didn't save any money. You have no rent. You were with him four months. You didn't save any money. My problem with this is, is you'll make a crazy 
how YouTube and trucking made me homeless. Darling, you made yourself homeless. I'll give you the Swift and the CR England. I'll give you that. But when you got to Snyder, you were supposed to stay and work through the adversity. That's what this, the greater story to this is. You have to work through the adversity. I don't know how to back. You got to work through that to know how to back, to know how to get to the point where you're comfortable with it. You got to work through that. There's no perfect fits, bro. There's no perfect fits. I'll let the owner know. Of course, nothing changed. And I just was not cool with that. And besides that, a lot of people know most, a lot of trekking jobs, you kind of get paid weekly. This one was bi-weekly. Oh my God. And let me tell you guys what I was making bi-weekly. Why I did recently, just what, it's been maybe almost two months now. Why I left that one. Bi-weekly, I was making $800. It's $400 a week. $800 every two weeks. No, boo-boo. It's not trucking because you weren't saying that about Schneider. You left a pay scale you didn't complain about to come to this place. Don't throw that on trucking. This is what you chose to do. Why didn't you speak to us about what Schneider was paying you? Schneider Driver. Let me show you how the Trucking Brown Channel works. Schneider Driver. Company. What do y'all get a week? Please put it at the bottom of the channel. Put it at the bottom of the video. You put yourself in this position at this point. That just wasn't really flying well with me anymore. Being out over the road, state to state. Um, I mean, most of the money was being spent on eating and then hotels because some days dispatch would not have a load for me for maybe a good four days. I think five days was the longest I didn't have a load. So I'm just out there sleeping on the truck. You know, you have to eat, you have to shower. And if you're not fueling, then you're not showering because you don't have the points. <laughs> so I'm spending money on showers. I'm spending money. on. I don't know if she has an AP or not, but you stay in the truck. You know, hotels are no, no. If you're in the truck, you stay in the truck. That's why when you go to a trucking company and they say they assign you a truck, they pull you out of the hotel. So you go into a hotel, that's another you thing. You're choosing to do that. Five days waiting on a load, that's insane. If I was you, I would be calling Schneider back to see if I can come back. On laundry, I'm spending money on food, and I'm only making $400 a week. And I still have cell phone bill, you know, other bills. Of course, you still need toiletries. You still need a lot of stuff when you're out there on the road. So that $400 a week was going like nothing. And mind you, I'm traveling state to state to state. I'm going all the way from West Coast to East Coast, North, South. I'm literally everywhere. The only, there's only a few places I have not been. I haven't done New York and New Jersey. Don't want to do Northeast, but um, I've been Southeast. I've been everywhere. So we come to today, to this point of how YouTube and trucking made me homeless. I still haven't gotten an apartment of my own. I am saving for that now. Why would you be saving for an apartment if we're talking about how trucking's making you homeless? If you're about to be, you're OTR, why would you be thinking about an apartment? You shouldn't be thinking about an apartment at all if you're going to try to make this work, unless it seems like this is what you do. You don't ever plan on making this work. So if it was going to be a thing where you are going to come in and in six, seven months, I'm done, you should have never came in trucking in the first place. You should have never came in in the first place, bro. Never. That means you did. That means if you let go that quickly, you're not into this. You're not into this. You should have never came in. I am currently staying in a hotel. And remember, I was telling you guys in the last video that I'm doing gig work. I just want the freedom. I don't want to work for anyone anymore. And here we are. <laughs> Chingale vamanos. Here we are. I want the freedom. You don't have any money. You don't have any money. You do not have any money. You want the freedom? You are you don't have no money. This sounds like to me, you are in your own way. And I'm going to say this as nicely as possible. You're freaking, you're, you're freaking, uh, I'll say this. You are a, you are, um, you need to get off the internet. One, you need to stop scrolling through Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. You need to stop scrolling through social media. You need to stop watching it completely because you are being influenced by social media, I want to be free. I mean, I heard this one guy saying, you know, time, location, freedom. That's not a thing, bro. Unless you have money, you need money for time, location, freedom. This is the bullshit. This comes from the vlogging. This comes from the people who do this content online. And then normal people think, oh, I kind of want to do that. You can't. You need to carry your ass back to Swift. I mean, uh, back to Schneider and sit your ass on the truck, bro.
unless you're just going to jump out of the industry completely and just go on with yourself. You need money to say, I don't, I don't feel like work. You need money for that. I don't know what the hell y'all are into these days. I was getting 240 a week. CR England, bro. I'm sorry. It just, it touched the nerve, honestly. But I did end up, guys, for the last week, I've been doing gig work and I got another warehouse job. Do I plan on staying at this warehouse job? If I was smart, if I was, which I don't want to say I'm not smart. Let's say if I was an average person, an average. You are a average person. You know, Joe Schmo American. You are an average Joe Show American. I probably would stay there. You see people stay in warehouse job for years. You guys, I'm too old. It's not for me. I'm going to stay there until I can get things together a little bit better. And like I said, I really want to be self-employed. So anyone that is a part of my community on this journey with me, you know, you're watching my videos and you have any tips on self-employment. Get- Here's some tips on self-employment money that's one money the ability to deal with adversity that's two flat out gumption you need to go back to schneider and get the backing under control or you need to switch industries completely you are somebody where you're listen you're in your you're in your own freaking way that's that's the truth you're in your own freaking way there's no way to to um to get you to change your mind about something once it's in your head. You're that type of person. You do not have the money, obviously not the connections or the gumption to be working on your own. I'm going to give you a suggestion for your personality type. You don't, you want to be home. You need to find a transit job, transit. You need to go work for the bus people. They will give you benefits. A lot of them are union. They have hours, they have overtime and you need to just accept, like you said, I'm too old. If you're too old, for working a crazy hard job, you're too old for entrepreneurship because entrepreneurship is more work than a job. And I don't think people tell y'all that when they're trying to sell you bullshit on Instagram. Owning your own business does not mean you work less. It means you work more. So if you're trying to lower your workload, you need to go get a job. Transit job, you hold the steering wheel, you open the door. You hold the steering wheel, you open the door. And you can do it till you're 80 years old. Full benefits, full dental, full health, retirement. Some of them have pensions, the whole nine. What you need to do is get out of fairy foo-foo land and start getting down with some reality. You're too old, you need to get an easy job like driving a bus. Those are your words. I don't know what the cockamamie bullshit that y'all are watching online which makes you think trucking is easy. You need to go to the appropriate channel that's going to tell you to trut. And the truth is, you either run it or you're not. This is hard work. This ain't no bullshit. This ain't easy. And if you do it wrong, you can die. That's the truth about trucking. It ain't glamour. It ain't hotels. It ain't tights. It ain't Timu halls. It ain't got my nails done, got my hair done. Look what I did inside of my truck. Isn't it cute? Look at my dog. All of that is bullshit. You understand? It's, it's, not, it's not a thing. Stop with the craziness it work ideas how i could do digital marketing what i could actually get into but anything for self-employment remote work just working for myself any ideas you guys have i am welcome to them i am willing to take them put them down in the comments for me on <laughs> let's see if i can think of anything else no well, i think that's i think that's most of my story i know there's more and i can get to more in another video but just to shorten things up, that's the gist of how YouTube and trucking made me homeless. And I just hope you guys continue this journey with me. I have so much more to tell you and I would like feedback and ideas from you all. So please join me in my next video and thank you for watching. If you did enjoy- Yeah, I will be paying attention. I just, y'all gotta stop, man. Y'all have to stop with the, with the, you know, you just have to stop with the fairy tale bullshit, bro. You have to stop and be real about your situation. You don't have a bunch of money right now. You don't, you don't like, you know, you want to slow down your work pace. You need to pick an easier job. Nothing about that says you need to be doing gig work. Those gig workers work, man. Those Uber drivers are in court right now for unfair work practices. It isn't easy. Go get a job. Humble yourself. People are going to talk to you any way they want to. That's just the state of the freaking world. You need the check. And stop having the airs if you don't need the check. Uh, you can't talk to me that way. Bullshit. Yes, they can talk to you that way because you need the check. Stop living in this fairy tale land where I don't need the check, but you do, though. You do. 
If you think I'm wrong, if you think I'm crazy, man, just tell me. Put it in the comments below. Sub. You trucking people making content? I'm going to start. I'm going to start reacting to your shit. I'm going to start reacting to your shit. This is Trucker Brown channel. It'll first be seen on Patreon. Appreciate everybody with the cash app. Don't do drugs.